Cam Akers plus a 2026 conditional seventh round pick to the Vikings for a 2026 conditional sixth round pick. And I don't know what the condition is. Is it he's on the team at the end of the year? Is it they sign him to a new contract? But the picks are conditional. It may be the Vikings ultimately give nothing for Cam Akers. Well, uh, it, it's, it is amazing, you know, uh, as far as a guy that we know has talent that's worth more than that. But I think this is one of those cases where, yeah, you can't ask for a whole lot when you've already put it out there that he's not on our team anymore. So they're just, I think, happy to get rid of Cam Akers, the distraction, everything that's gone on with him. I think they feel that he did not act in a professional manner really throughout the last two seasons, and they had enough. And they felt like he was bringing down their football team and your Vikings football team not been able to run the ball as of as of late, right? In the first two games, nothing going there. And okay, Kevin O'Connell, he came from the Rams. So he knows Cam Akers is going to know his system and fit in the right way there. So that's where it makes sense too. Uh, but yeah, we'll see where this goes. I don't know if it matters who's at running back for for your Vikings football team right now because when I watch, you know, the run game, it, it's not like I look at it and go, oh, man, there's huge holes and they're just they're missing them. Right. He's talent. He's he's talented. We know that he can he can bounce to the outside, make plays there. He can run hard through the middle like you're seeing here and drive the pile. Uh, but but I think I look at the Vikings right now more on just the run game has to be better. They're all about the pass game. and It doesn't look like they work on the run game a whole lot there in Minnesota. 69 rushing yards in two games for the Vikings. And right. I don't know if they're not committed to it or they just abandon it because if it's not working early, why keep running into a brick wall literally when you can just throw it to Justin Jefferson or TJ Hawkinson or Jordan Addison or KJ Osborne? Right. That, that's we, where we, I feel we've like... got the passing game. Right. Yeah. Let's just let's just pass. Let's pass to set up the run or pass to set up the pass. Yeah. It, 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 like they obviously want to pass. They sent us those signals all off season, right? We we know that. But man, that it's 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 hard living in the NFL to be that one sided, and to rush for thirty four yards a game. That that's I, I don't care. You better have the most special quarterback and receivers in football to s win football games and not not have a run game to that capacity. That's really rare that you're going to find success with that much of an imbalance. And uh, that's where the Vikings set, certainly got to you know shore that up a little bit and, and fix that problem. One of the ways you make an offense run in a consistently effective manner is to have the defense on its heels a little bit about what's coming. Yeah. Run or pass. That is the first important decision that gets made after the ball is snapped. And the best offenses disguise and they understand their own tendencies and they know which formations they've run out of predominantly in the past and which formations they pass out of. And part of the cat and mouse game is make them think you're going to run and then pass. Make them think you're going to pass and then run. And if all you do is pass, 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 you've given the defense basically inside information because they just know. we. They just know. Pass rush up front. We know what the second level needs to be doing. We need. We know what the secondary needs to do. They need to be covering their guys. They don't need to worry about a, a sweep to their side. No, no, they're not going to run the ball. That takes, I would assume, Chris, a ton of stress and pressure off of a defense. De definitely. It, it's definitely one of the things that's said about the Vikings a little bit when teams play them. You know, they teach their defenses, like even when they do play action pass, like don't overcommit to the run. You know, play that slow. Think pass when you see those type of things. You know, they, 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 they have little calls as far as how aggressive the second level should be, you know, on defenses. And – you know, slow flow or slow fill or whatever. There's different phrases teams use, and those are used against the Vikings. And yeah, it's hard to be successful that way. And then, of course, you're putting a ton of pressure on the offensive line too because most of the game they're, they're doing this. They never get to fire off the ball and get in a rhythm and wear a defensive line out. It's just it's hard to win in the NFL that way unless you got Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid and and people like that. Okay, they can get 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 away with that to a degree. But it, it's it's few and far between that have teams that are built that way that can live that kind of life and 
Yeah, the Vikings kind of are, are learning that the hard way here right now through two weeks. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.